Okay, now we're looking at a kit that I've been waiting for for some time. Um, if you haven't worked out now, I am very much a fan of uh, Russell Soviet vehicles and I do have a strong affinity for engineering uh, vehicles as well. Um, armored recovery vehicles, armored engineering vehicles. And it was excellent news for myself when Trumpeteer announced they were bringing out the Russian Brem 1, which is a T72 chassis armored recovery vehicle. Armored recovery vehicles are basically tank chassis, and their purpose is to recover uh, damaged vehicles from the battlefield and to affect field repairs. So um, I just I like the look of them. I like the specialized purpose on the box art. Straight away, we've got excellent box art as well. We show this uh, Brem 1 with its crane deployed and it's uh, lifting up a big uh, V12 there. Um, you can see on the outside here all the sort of snatch blocks. There's the um, atypical Russian uh, log that's used as a anti-ditching device. Um, the recovery wires. On the rear here, I believe that this is the snorkel. All Russian vehicles um, in their doctrine are designed to ford uh, water, so they all have snorkels that they carry. On the side, here's the 3D depictions of some of the details. Also, a note is the front mounted dozer blade, so they can be used to um, build up some um, field defenses. But really, this is used to uh, give the vehicle a um, strong ground support it sort of digs itself in to anchor itself when it's affecting recovery using its winches then on the side here we've got the schemes there's four schemes uh, and all of them have got the um, they, they've all got every single trumpeteer kit they all seem to have the same camos and I don't know how accurate they are I, I'm starting to really doubt them because I do look a lot at references and try and find as much as I can about a vehicle prior to a build and I find on trumpeteer you always have a you know the grey, the black, the green you've got a green which is going to be accurate always have two shades for some reason and then you've got this sort of uh, scheme that I first saw on the vehicles that uh, you saw at the Russian uh, May Day Parade. And it's pointing out a photo etch fret and a decal sheet. Again, it's generic. It's got a couple of numbers on it, uh, unit numbers. And then it's got that Nistoy Pod Streloy. I think that's don't stand under the beam but I'm not too sure my Russian is not so great okay and of course I, uh, I got this kit in Japan it was 9,700 yen and uh, that was tax-free price which brought it down by 10% so I'll tell you how much that is in dollars and euros in the description there let's open this up see what's inside again we have first of all their latest stuff which is a flyer for up and coming models and of course one featuring this vehicle the Brem one our pamphlet instruction booklet which has got 20, 20 pages and then here's our painting and marking guide and again, what we have is actually this one's this one is much better than the the tiger, for example. So this time it's showing in all different facets. So you've got the top view, left and right profiles, front and back profiles, and some detail of the crane boom there. Because it's only one color as well. It's suggesting in the in the paint references, all trumpeteers have, have got this. They've also got the same stuff. They've got Mr. Hobby, uh, Mr. Hobby Accretion, which is their acrylic range. They've renamed it. Uh, Vallejo for a few of them. Model Master, Tamiya, and Humbrol. 
the more interesting camouflage versions are here and again they call out the various colors in the paint reference guide now this is excellent they've got every single profile of the camo I've never done one of these with a grey and if I can find references that actually show this this vehicle I may well go for that grey black camo because it does look interesting okay and one side of the box you've got this sort of hero parts as I like to call them which are the sort of slide molded bits and pieces let's have a look at this but let's open this up and uh, check this out few pieces jammed inside here. First of all, they've got the um, like zip box and this looks like some parts of the crane. These are all intricately moulded. I'm not quite sure why they're in there but they're separate moulding frame. They've got all the wires here. This is um, recovery wire and also they've got this conduit which is flexible vinyl which is hollowed out which you use to plumb the fuel lines in if you're going to use the externally mounted fuel fuel drums let's get this open a typical t72 hull one thing you notice straight away is this profile here which extends up and over so that's the sort of Brem Outlook where I suppose they've got their kit, it's just a different profile of vehicle. See it here from the um, top of the hull. It's got this extended bit so on one side you've got the commander and the driver and then on the other side is where the crane sits down that way. We'll open up these sprues in a minute you have a look at there's some other bits and pieces some detail parts here which uh, include I think that's the deck the deck part on the top I'll show you what I mean just up here where this zip box sits on quite a nice molding it's got like a diamond tread pattern and you slip there's a 12.7 millimeter self-defense weapon or anti-aircraft defense weapon. Uh, two sprues of transparent parts for the optics and periscopes, etc. Don't know why I've got two, but I have. More zip boxes. These are slide molded, so you don't need to construct them. They're all built up, ready to go on and I'm pretty sure again that is this big box that sits on here decal sheet nothing to, to notice there just generic um, numbering there's nothing special they're all white uh, markings here's the this is in a like a rubberized vinyl sort of material and um, it's the anti-ditching log you've got a mantlet there for a t72 for a normal version and there's the uh, the shell catcher for the 12.7 uh, hmg there's drive sprockets and the idlers photo etch fret pretty small and all that you need so it's got some engine grill stuff uh, it's got some stuff for the um, to retain the anti-ditching log and some small fixings they look like um, yeah they look like bolts or something let's open these sprues and I'll show you the details okay let's start looking at the sprues in detail first one I want to point out is the crane boom which is like one large single piece molding which is going to help alignment etc and there's a couple of there I think that's the engineers couple of there so there's going to be details that go on underneath but the fact that they've got this as one piece 
is going to make things pretty simple. Um, I thought they were going to do this in Photo Etch. Um, this is the indicator for the swing of the arm, and as you can see, in the on the instructions as well, they have it indicating down there. I need to check that. If that's zero, that would be right, but I would expect that to be. I don't know. I don't know how that works, but I thought that would be pointing straight down when it's not being. And I thought this would be indicate the angle of swing, but I'm not too sure. Uh, this is the running gear. If you've built any of the T72 kits from Trumpeteer, they really were a breakthrough when they came out. Anybody of the who in, who enjoys the uh, Russian Soviet sort of genre, um, we previously had the um, the uh, Tamiya T72, which was not that great. I think there was an Esky one or something like that, or Dragon, and then these came along and they just changed everything. Uh, not a, uh, it's not, a, I'm not going to say it's a straightforward bill, but you, you have got, you know, over a thousand parts in these kits because they haven't compromised on everything. The, the detail's outstanding, uh, even, the, even the road wheels, they've got the markings for the, the rubber um, profile, they've got the details of the, um, of the size of the rubber and everything. It's it's really is good. So this is a generic sprue from the from any T seventy two kit from Trumpeteer. You can see the smoke launchers here, which we won't be needing for this kit. So you've got four sprues of that, which is running gear basically in road wheel. There's four sprues like so, which are detail parts. But just uh, I just point out just how fine they are. You can see these are the. Um, you know the winch, the winches, etc., and these are the uh, recovery wires, the um, the ends of them. Really fine detail again on some of these parts. Everything's nicely hollowed out. That's the um, rear fuel drum holder, and there's some other like eye bolts and bits for securing the recovery wires. Individual track links. So there's. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. I think there's about eight of these sprues, which are uh, again a common T72 sprue. Um, I've used them many times. Okay, they are, it does take a while to build them all up, and I've got a method that I've used on all my T72s, T80s um, of constructing these tracks, and I'll, I'll go and come across that. This won't be a, a, a I think I'm probably going to do this after I finish off a few other builds. But I have really waited for this kit for quite a long time, so I'm very happy to see it. <clears throat> Two sprues like so, which are details of the hydraulic cylinders here for the, um, the crane, the uh, rear fuel drums, and lots and lots of little details and bits and pieces. Look at the fine detail on that. You can see through these... Um, uh, winches or whatever they are. <coughs> Just point out, Trumpeteer, one great thing about them is very solid cardboard boxes and excellent packaging. Never had a problem with any broken parts in Trumpeteer kits because they put some thought into it, wrapping up the pieces individually with this foam wrapping to protect all the little details so they don't get broken. And here you can see this is that snorkel with the molded on um, steps, I would believe that they would be. Here's the front um, dozer blade. I'm not, I wouldn't call it a dozer blade. I think it's called like a, uh, I wouldn't know what you call it. It's like for securing the vehicle when, it, when it's exerting maximum torque on its uh, recovery winch. Fenders, I'm not too sure if these are generic T72 ones or generic T72 parts. Again, you've got like the fuel boxes, which are one part moldings. The fenders are really nicely detailed. They've got all the little bits of pieces like the rubberized flaps on, um, the hinges, all that detail's been rendered. The underneath as well, they've actually got the ribbing underneath. 
the reinforcement even though you don't see it here is the rear engine deck and again that is really nicely louvered great detail there and again this uh, profiled part for a T72 rear deck detail parts here which are multiple <laughs> obviously lots and lots of detail fine detail to add throughout the hull including whatever that is but um, here's the brush guards for the lights these are pretty nice and fine actually I think these are usable right away they look really fine thin they'll be perfect and again some of that nice protection that they add on to stop parts being broken I'm not even open that up here's the upper hole detail sits on like so again it's like pretty bare because all the details are on the sprues you have to add them all on and a fuel tank there like you see it's like one of those T55 style ones and I think that sits up on top I think it might be something to do with a generator and that's why it sits up on top as a separate fuel supply just point out this sprue here I'm not going to get out of the bag but this is um, I think this is a zip box that you make up so some of them are 3D and the other ones are parts that you make up so let's go through the instructions last point oh so uh, I'll just point out here there's some poly caps as well poly caps are absolutely pointless on, on this model because uh, you don't need them everything will be locked solid okay final part of the review let's have a look at the instruction booklet from Trumpeteer which always is a book booklet as well uh, we've got the sprue layout mapping with all the parts that are inside the kit and telling you how many of each sprue there is and all the little details at like the polycap, the brass wire and the photo etch, all that stuff's mapped out there so uh, you know you've got everything. Start off with the construction of a lower hole. All this is a typical T72. And we come up to the tracks by stage five. It's telling you to add polycaps early on in the build. Um you won't need them except to secure them onto the onto the um, onto the axles, and they actually does show you in profile how the track is meant to sit. Uh, slight sag, but um, yeah, one thing to bear in mind as well with these vehicles is there's no side skirts, so uh, I'm not going to get away with my usual trick of building up half a run. I need to do the whole thing, and that's going to prove um, a bit of a challenge for painting but we'll overcome it up to the upper hull here details going on clear parts for the periscopes etc the fenders get constructed it's calling out when to make holes all the details instructions are really clear just make sure sometimes you might want to look ahead a few steps um, if you can't see where a part fits but I can't see any examples like that basically by stage 10 we've really got a brem constructed with uh, even that front blade blade on mounted and then we're on to detailing the upper hull with all these intricate details parts winches snatch blocks everything's going on there i like this call out here these are the recovery wires and each one of them is called out with the exact length so 112 millimeters down to 68 millimeters and this is probably on, up to scale on here so it's telling you how these uh, go on they're numbered one to five and then on this sequence here you can see how they lay out so it actually shows you exactly how they are positioned on the hull of the tank uh, when they when the recovery wires are not being used the self-defense uh, HMG is built up in stage 13, the couplers, and then this is this um, deck that I was pointing out, which is all built up there. In some examples, I think, of the Brem 1, you will not see that zip box up there. You'll see this point empty, uh, this cage area empty, and I wonder if they use that to carry uh, spares or anything, but 
you need to really check your references. Uh, stage 17, we're building up the crane and it shows you again to use a brass wire and it's got a full diagram showing you how you locate the um, the wiring within the um, the the, uh, the crane itself. Quite a lot of detail there, hydraulics, etc. for the rams. So we've got, see what, four steps of instructions just for the, just for the crane. Stage 20, we fit the crane and also that zip box is up to the upper hull. And then just final details. So 21 pages, 22 we finish off and there's the snorkel box getting fitted on. Snorkel is, um, is fitted on there. Okay, let's point out something very quickly. Oh, and sorry, another detail here. If you fit the rear fuel drums, there's the plumbing instructions and it shows you the duct, how that's used. Um, on the box art, you'll see that the rear fuel drums are not fitted. Let's just point out something quickly. Have you guys seen what's missing? On the box art, you've got a fully deployed crane uh, winching up the engine. In the instructions, there are no call outs whatsoever on how to build up the crane deployed or how to use the various recovery gear. So can you do it or otherwise? I'm not honestly too sure if this works or otherwise. Let's just flick back in the instructions. Is it snap fitted onto there? Is it glued onto there? I think it's actually just glued on. I don't think there's any way that this crane arm can be shown in the um, you know used position unless you modify the kit. So, anyways, that's the Brem One. I hope you enjoyed the review and stand by for some builds coming up pretty soon.